If you've ever experienced stomach cramps, bloating, or those sudden, unpredictable trips to the bathroom, you might be dealing with irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS for short. Irritable bowel syndrome is a common but often misunderstood digestive disorder that affects millions of people worldwide. Irritable bowel syndrome is characterized by symptoms such as abdominal pain, bloating, and diarrhea or constipation, as well as other changes in bowel habits, and it can significantly impact a person's quality of life. The chronic nature of the symptoms, coupled with the unpredictability of flare-ups, can lead to missed work or school days, social isolation, and psychological stress. Unlike some other gastrointestinal conditions, Irritable bowel syndrome doesn't cause any structural damage to the digestive tract, which is why it's considered a functional disorder. Approximately 10 to 15% of the global population is estimated to have irritable bowel syndrome, making it one of the most prevalent gastrointestinal conditions worldwide. While irritable bowel syndrome can affect people of all ages, it is most commonly diagnosed in individuals under the age of 50 and its prevalence decreases slightly with age. And in terms of gender, irritable bowel syndrome is more commonly diagnosed in women, with a female to male ratio of about 2 to 1. In some studies, up to 70% of the diagnosed patients were women. Unfortunately, despite its prevalence, the exact causes of irritable bowel syndrome remains complex and varied involving a combination of factors such as gut-brain interaction, altered gut motility, imbalances in gut microbiota, and dietary triggers. In this video, we'll reveal to you everything you need to know from gut motility, that's how your intestines move, to the role your gut microbiome plays, to why some people experience pain and discomfort more intensely. Plus, we're talking about how diet, infections, and even stress can all mess with your gut. Whether you've just been diagnosed or have been living with IVS for a while, understanding these seven aspects is key to managing your symptoms and getting back control of your life. Number one, gut-brain interaction. Abdominal pain is a hallmark symptom of irritable bowel syndrome, often described as cramping or aching. The pain is typically relieved or partially relieved by bowel movements. The brain and the gut communicate through a complex network of nerves, and in people with irritable bowel syndrome, this communication may become dysregulated. As a result, the sensitivity of the gut becomes heightened. In addition to that, stress and anxiety can exacerbate symptoms due to their impact on the gut-brain axis. Many people with irritable bowel syndrome report that their symptoms worsened during periods of stress. In August of 2013, a study was published in Neurogastroenterology and Motility to explore how gut-brain communication dysfunction contributes to irritable bowel syndrome. The findings of this study revealed that approximately 60% of irritable bowel syndrome patients showed heightened activity in the anterior cingulate cortex, which is a brain region associated with pain perception, compared to 30% of controls. About 70% of irritable bowel syndrome patients exhibited increased cortisol responses to stress, compared to 30% of controls. The study concluded that dysfunction in the gut-brain axis, especially heightened pain sensitivity and stress response, is crucial in irritable bowel syndrome pathophysiology. Number 2. Gut motility. In irritable bowel syndrome, the muscles in the intestines may contract more strongly or weakly than normal, causing food to move too quickly or too slowly through the digestive tract. This can lead to diarrhea, constipation, or a mix of both. Many studies were conducted to observe how food moves through the intestines in irritable bowel syndrome patients. It was found that in people with diarrhea-type irritable bowel syndrome, food moved too quickly through the gut, leading to loose stools. For those with constipation-type irritable bowel syndrome, food moved too slowly, causing hard stools. For constipation-type irritable bowel syndrome, laxatives may be prescribed to help with constipation. For diarrhea-type irritable bowel syndrome, medications like loperamide can help control diarrhea. Number 3. Gut Microbiome The balance of bacteria in the gut, known as the gut microbiome, 
may be disrupted in people with irritable bowel syndrome. Some research suggests that an overgrowth of certain types of bacteria or a reduction in beneficial bacteria may contribute to symptoms. One study published in the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology was aimed to analyze the types of bacteria in the guts of people with irritable bowel syndrome. They found that around 73% of irritable bowel syndrome patients had less diversity in their gut bacteria compared to healthy people. They had more bad bacteria and fewer good bacteria. This shows that an imbalance in gut bacteria might be a big part of why irritable bowel syndrome symptoms happen. Some other studies suggest that probiotics, which help restore a healthy balance of gut bacteria, may be beneficial for irritable bowel syndrome patients, though the evidence is mixed. Number four, visceral hypersensitivity. People with irritable bowel syndrome often have a heightened sensitivity to the stretching and movement of their intestines. This visceral hypersensitivity can cause normal digestive processes to be perceived as painful or uncomfortable. Researchers tested how sensitive the intestines are in people with irritable bowel syndrome by gently inflating a balloon inside the rectum. About 85% of them felt pain at much lower pressure levels than people without irritable bowel syndrome. Adding to that, Brain scans also showed that their brains reacted more strongly to this pain. This means that people with irritable bowel syndrome feel more pain from normal digestive processes, which might explain why their symptoms are so uncomfortable. Number five, dietary factors. When it comes to IBS, what you eat can have a huge impact on how you feel. Certain foods can trigger symptoms like bloating, cramps, and those sudden, unwanted trips to the bathroom. But it's not the same for everyone. For some, high-fiber foods like beans, broccoli, and cabbage can cause chaos, while others might react badly to dairy, fried foods, or spicy dishes. We also have the infamous high FODMAP foods, which contain fermentable carbs that can be hard to digest for people with IBS. Examples of these foods include foods like onions, garlic, and apples. Moreover, other foods that influence irritable bowel syndrome are fatty foods, caffeine, and alcohol. Not to mention, some people with irritable bowel syndrome may have specific food intolerances, such as lactose intolerance, which can exacerbate symptoms. A recent study tested whether a low FODMAP diet could help irritable bowel syndrome patients. According to the results, about 76% of patients on the low FODMAP diet had less bloating and pain compared to those on a regular diet. This suggests that some foods can trigger irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, and avoiding them can make people feel better. Many patients benefit from following a low FODMAP diet, which involves reducing the intake of fermentable carbohydrates that can cause bloating and discomfort. Furthermore, Soluble fiber supplements such as psyllium can help manage constipation-predominant irritable bowel syndrome. However, watch out because insoluble fiber found in foods such as beans, nuts, and whole wheat flour may worsen symptoms in some people. Before we continue, if you have been enjoying the video so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Number 6. Post-infectious irritable bowel syndrome. Some cases of irritable bowel syndrome develop after a gastrointestinal infection, such as food poisoning. This is known as post-infectious irritable bowel syndrome and may involve lingering inflammation and changes in gut bacteria. Researchers looked at people who developed irritable bowel syndrome after having a gut infection like food poisoning. After analyzing the data collected, it was revealed that people who had a gut infection were 6.5 times more likely to develop irritable bowel syndrome later on. About 10% of people who had these infections ended up with irritable bowel syndrome. This shows that sometimes irritable bowel syndrome can start after an infection messes up the gut, leading to long-term symptoms. Number seven, psychological factors. Stress, anxiety, and depression are common in people with irritable bowel syndrome, and these psychological factors can exacerbate symptoms. The relationship between stress and irritable bowel syndrome is bidirectional. 
meaning that stress can worsen irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, and chronic irritable bowel syndrome can lead to increased stress and anxiety. Fortunately, treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy, vet directed hypnotherapy, and mindfulness based stress reduction have been shown to reduce symptoms in some irritable bowel syndrome patients by addressing the psychological aspects of the condition. In addition to those, techniques such as yoga, meditation, and regular exercise can help manage stress and reduce the severity of irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. So this was a simple explanation of irritable bowel syndrome. Even though there is no cure for this condition, the symptoms can be managed effectively through a combination of dietary changes, lifestyle modifications, and medications. While it can be challenging to manage, understanding the condition and working closely with doctors can help individuals control their symptoms and improve their quality of life. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or anyone you know suffer from irritable bowel syndrome? What dietary changes have made the biggest difference for you in managing IBS? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.